You could do that. That'd be funny. <laughs> I'm talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see and everybody you can't that we've talked about. I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God, I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. Well, what is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, everybody, into the Off Tackle with John Fina Show, brought to you by the Market Dominator team on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network, presented by Picasso's Pizza. Treat yourself to the most flavorful pizza on game day. Picasso's We Are Buffalo Pizza. Sh- shipping local and nationwide. Order online at picassospizza.net. I'm good, just going to say that we might need to get a Kleenex sponsor for just this show. <laughs> John's going to go just just jam them up inside there. Stop sniffling. I can't. I'll, I got I got my snot rag here. Just, I'll try you got to use a chair it. that leans back. Just lean back and put your head up. You got a boom mic. You don't. Nobody needs to see your face. Like just like. Yeah, just turn your avatar on, which is probably Bruce Nolan, but turn your avatar on and then just like lean back. That's I'm just hilarious. kidding. My name is Joe Miller. I'm the host of this year's show, the Off Tackle with John Fina show, along with my sniffly partner in crime, uh, John Fina, former offensive tackle for the Buffalo Bills. John, I would ask you, but I already kind of know. How are you tonight? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's so nice of you to like just twist the knife into the guy who's sneezing, his nose is. I thought you said it was a boom mic. It is a boom mic. Yeah, I feel like the dog's ass, all right? Come on. Wow. Thanks, what for, it, thank, thanks for rubbing it in. What does the dog's ass feel like? Uh, it, <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> this is going to be a fun show. But uh, Hey, good. Mimi, Mimi, it's the Vancouver Bills backers, baby. Stop bragging. I want that mug, she says. Uh, yeah. So, uh, welcome everybody to the show. Everybody that's climbing, climbing into the chat. For those of you that are uh, listening to us in podcast form, we appreciate all of you. Uh, we are super chat live. So if you've got a one final comment or question for John Fina, who will sniffle his way through it, um, he's about to sneeze. <laughs> are you going to sneeze or are you just going to fake us out? <laughs> Oh, he's got the mute on. The one we can't hear him. <laughs> well, I put the mute on because I thought it was going to sneeze. I'm Jill's, a professional. Jill's going to be amazing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, uh, we are Super Chat Live. Also, like and subscribe, whatever platform that you are on. This here is the final show of the 2022 uh, Buffalo Bills NFL football season. Uh, that does not mean that we're going to be doing a show next week for 2023. We won't be back until who knows draft day, maybe, or, but at least very, at the at the at worst case scenario, we will not be back until somewhere around the beginning of training camp. So for those of you that are tuned in, we appreciate you. We appreciate all of you hanging with us this whole entire year. It's been a really good year. Uh, and before we get started, we're going to talk about a couple different points. And one of those things is the most memorable things from this year. And we would love some feedback from the comment section. Uh, but before we do that, I'm sure you saw the news that Roger Saffold made the Pro Bowl today. Maybe that's why I'm not feeling well. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, out of, I think, 58 guards, he was ranked 50th. Well, that, well, it seemed, well, look, um, I don't want to bag on Roger. I mean, I I had high hopes. I think that he would probably tell you that he had some snafus during the season. You know, I don't like to call anybody out for lest I be called out. But, you know, a lot of the Pro Bowl voting is relationships and things of that nature. And, you know, I follow him on Twitter and he's a great guy, you know. Um, But look, I I don't want to pin a loss on Roger Saffold. I mean, the entire team – the front office, probably uh, the training staff and the custodial team and the ticket office probably all could have done better, uh, you know, to get that victory. But it was, uh, it was really hard game to watch. And I know we already talked about it, but I'm still stinging like the rest of uh, 
Bills Mafia out there and watching those two teams last night didn't make it any better. Yeah, Maui Jim says that uh, he's going to start hooking us up with some more swag. I'm in for that. Where do I send my address? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people ask me all the time, and I'm like, I don't know how people get my address. I'm sure, you know, there is no privacy anymore. Right, right. Uh, unless you use Talos Data Security Data Protection. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Uh, not really. Uh but you know, people ask me, and I'm like, "Well, it's on the internet somewhere." So you know, don't make me do your don't make me do your work for you. Let before we uh, get through the rest of this show, let's go ahead and take the market dominator. Word from a word from our uh, title sponsor, John Spazjack, who we have texted and thanked graciously for his yes. support all through this season. John is the man. We appreciate you big time. Hey, it's John Spazjack here with the Market Dominators team. Uh, we are so grateful to be sponsoring the Off Tackle Show with John Fine, hosted by our good friend Joe Miller. And I want to reflect on events last Monday night. I sat there live on the 40-yard line in Cincinnati. That's the wrong one. Let me find it. I was going to say, bro, that's the wrong one. But... That is the wrong video. Uno momento, por favor. So, like, like, do something. Like, like take take up some time or something. Like, Well, I, I would think that since you played that one, <laughs> we should charge our good man Spazcheck double. Right, I feel like you Hello, guys Buffalo two, football two family. I want to say thank you for tuning in to one of the greatest podcasts we have going today, the John Phoenix Show, hosted by Joe Miller. These are my good friends, and I really appreciate the way that they attack the podcast. They connect with you as a fan. They break the game down with excellence. They teach, they educate. And they bring fun to the table for us to experience a little bit more of our favorite Buffalo football team. So, folks, this is what we do in real estate as the market dominator and the market dominators team. We bring to you not only fun, but we seek to educate, to advocate, to negotiate and to dominate in this competitive market. So if you want to win the way our team is winning, you reach out to me directly and I'll respond. 716-570-3298. Let's go, Buffalo. That is John Spazcheck and the Market Dominator team. If you are in the market to buy or sell a home, please give John and his team a call at 716-570-3298. And I apologize for having the wrong video posted, or I should say prepared. So, yes, so. Live television. What are you going to do, right? But uh, we appreciate you, John, and gutting it out for the team. Uh, John Spazcheck or John Fina? John Fina. Well, you know, Joe, outside of the season, you typically ignore my texts and phone calls. So <laughs> I, had, I didn't want to <laughs> miss this opportunity to say goodbye <laughs> and cry so, a little so bit. Holy crap. <laughs> You're not wiping boogers in your eyes. I think you get pink eye that At way. At this point, it really doesn't matter. Doesn't I don't matter. know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a wife's out in the backyard digging a grave right now. <laughs> just after the show is over, when uh, we get to nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm just going to go in the backyard and lay down in the dirt. It's just it's over. I I am told that if you dig six feet into the earth, no matter where you are in the planet, that the temperature is the same. It's possible. I don't know. Maybe. I know the frost level, line frost, whatever here is 36 inches or 40 inches. So, right? Twice that. Well, I'll tell you, after last week, the frost level in Buffalo is about freaking 10 feet down. It's been a, it's been a rough, it's been a rough week uh, for sure. It's been even rougher after watching the Kansas City Chiefs frequently get uh, pressure on Pat Mahomes, or not Pat Mahomes, but Joe Burrow with four, rushing four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just kind of goes back into the whole it was it, the way the way that they so we're off we're off. You you skipped a segment. We're supposed to talk about all the great things that happened this season and the I best know. memories. But but it was it was very cool the way that they moved Chris Jones around. Basically the only defensive lineman that any of us have ever heard of, second round pick, uh Chris Jones, they they kept putting him on the tight end, and the tight end could not handle him. And he just basically kept eating that guy's lunch all day long, which well, is, let... <laughs> goes to show you that the Bills didn't game plan at all for that football game well tight ends uh, we always used to laugh in training camp when a defensive player was blocked by the tight end oh, yeah. it's like when the kicker tackles the returner <laughs> right. you gotta head to the sideline and be like i got tackled by a 
<laughs> but it's a kicker. <laughs> That's yeah. hysterical. That's one of those things. So, but we are going to on this show. And uh, again, I would like for everybody in the comment section that's here uh, to maybe, and we'll we'll throw I'm some up on the screen. John's leaving. We're going to uh, go through and talk about just some of the highlights from the season. So, whether it's at a game, uh, a play in a game, a moment in a game, an opportunity that you had to basically connect with friends or whatever. Uh, just something from the season, a thing or two that was a highlight for you and John, Mr. Sniffles, you have the honors. Yeah. Well, number one was despite the loss, Mimi and I meeting Bill's mafia and coming to the playoff game and, you know, it magically snowed during the game, which is like perfect. Mm. Uh, people, people ask me, well, you must've played in a lot of those games. I think I was in two. It That's just it? It doesn't, it didn't seem to happen when I played. Mm. We had crappy weather. It was cold. It was windy. It was rainy. But so, you know, from our warm vantage point in a suite, it was much nicer than being outdoors with Joe Miller. Right. (laughs) Uh, But the overall experience of having Mimi there and and taking her around the city of Buffalo and just, you know, driving along Delaware Avenue and, and taking some of the side streets and just pointing at mansions and, uh, the restaurants, the places I used to go and, and seeing our old friends in Buffalo and my new friends in Buffalo was fantastic. I mean, the tailgate with Mimi, I mean, she got to meet uh, the people she interacts with, like Sarah Larson, who's wonderful, and Dan Freddy and Joe Miller. And I mean, the list the list goes on. Kimmick and Pam Adon. I mean, just forget it. I mean, everybody was wonderful to her. And thank you, uh to everyone for that. And I have to say, you know, seeing Jerry Ostrowski after all these years at the Kansas city game and Mm -hmm. seeing the entire Miller family and everybody that showed out for that, Alyssa Milano, or I always say Alyssa Milano, uh, that was probably number two. Then uh, I'd say the uh, uh, green Bay game. It was a victory. I was here. That was awesome. And I just, uh, the more, the closer I get, the harder it is uh, when we lose. And it's the closer to the fans, really. I mean, I'm no closer to the team Mm. than I was 10 years ago, much less, you know, 10 minutes ago. Yeah, for sure. So being and feeling the emotions of all of the the Bills Mafia, you know, just, just all the quiet pain and the out loud pain. Uh, There's a certain beauty to that in a way you know you uh you bond in i think in sadness as much as you do in joy so sure. um those are those are my highlights as far as plays on the field man i don't know i mean we'll, I love- we'll, the, the commenters are putting me in there so we'll go we'll go oh through. yeah Let, let's see a lot of bit well, a lot of that I go first don't no we- no no you're just the host <laughs> You played the wrong open. So, so Lauren, Lauren, before we, uh, before I, I go, uh, said that uh, one of her highlights, John, was meeting me at the Rock Pile Tailgate. And Lauren, I remember that. And you're right, that was a highlight. That was a lot of fun, except for the fact yeah. that I, when I walked around the the mud lot like four times because I couldn't find you guys. I'm like, what the heck? So it's the, right up against the fence. Like, yes, I walk. I'm just an idiot. So I, that, can we just leave it at that? Like, we will just stop right there. I'm, I'm an idiot. So, but Lauren, it was great to meet you. For me. A lot of my greatest times this season probably were wrapped around uh, tailgates and or gatherings, Bill's Mafia gatherings. Um, To your point, the Kansas City game was probably number one for me. Um, That was just from the night that we flew in and you guys had already had your fun, right? You guys had been down to the to the the Bill's Backers bar. I forget what it's called there in Kansas City. And and uh, and Joel Allen was doing karaoke. (laughs) Right. Yeah, Um, that was hilarious. Yeah. But like even just to show up and. You know, I got to sit with Joe Marino. Joe Marino was there and like and just chat and talk and and the night before and then the lead up to the game. I was telling somebody how just what an elite experience it is. The fact that you roll in and unlike so our tailgate is elite and I guess there's def- different measures or level not levels but there's different types of elite, right? Sure. There's something to be said to go to Orchard Park and you know for a home opener at by eight o'clock in the morning, if it's a one o'clock game or if it's a primetime game by, you know, they're sending kids home from school like they did this year. And that whole entire area is just shut down. 
Like there's no cars anywhere. Nobody's going anywhere. Everybody's already there six, seven hours beforehand. Kansas City it was very, it was a cool experience to roll up whatever we were six, seven hours beforehand. And there was just a big giant line in the street where people had popped up their tents. Like they tailgate before the tailgate, which was kind of neat that they like all, I'm like, are they really setting up? Are they cooking food right now? And sure enough, they were, it was cool. But that whole experience, just the way that the whole, you know, that we had a, a kind of our section, uh, Kenny uh, Pinto Ron was right, was right there. The, the uh, Southwest Missouri bills backers were there. There was just a whole lot of people. And then our crew was there. And after a couple hours, our place was kind of the place to be. Um, but yeah, to your point, just everybody that was there and then the football game and, and then, uh, Jerry Ostrowski, I said this the other night on one of the shows, Jerry Ostrowski from the dark. So we, we go back to the car. I don't know if you were there yet, but, uh, for, yeah, in the dark, all I hear is Jerry Ostrowski's voice basically say, I came, we won. You're welcome. Bill's mafia. And it was just, uh, <laughs> it was like, yes, that's what this is all about. It was a little bit deeper than that, Joe. Yeah, it probably, but it was great. Um, the home opener was fantastic and believe it or not, the home opener tailgate and the games, the last two playoff games the tailgates were great the miami dolphins tailgate was 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 fantastic and then it was one upped uh it was crazy uh for the for the uh the bengals tailgate to see mary wilson was there uh Deion dawkins mom was there Jordan oh Poyer, yeah that was lisa dawkins right, right? jordan Poyer's dad is always there um just all the people that showed up you were obviously there like it was crazy it was daryl tally yeah it was great Tally showed up it was yeah it was just uh that's always a highlight for me to see daryl i yeah. enjoyed daryl yeah yeah, Daryl's a lot of fun. So it was there was a lot of good stuff. And then uh all of the plays. There was just so many good plays this year. And that I think that's what's getting lost in just a lot of the negative conversation, which we're going to talk a little bit about just some of the stuff we feel like the Bills need to do going forward. Um, you lose sight, right? When you lose a game like that. When you when when they go out and they lay an egg in the playoffs, which is just something this team never has really ever done. It just you lose sight of everything that was fun through the season. So we wanted to kind of take a I don't no. No, you, and the people in the comments don't. They're they're loving it, man. For sure. So let's uh so I what do I got here? So going through some of the comments, uh RJ Melville says uh Naheem Hines kick return heard around the world. Where were you when that play happened? I was at home. No, wait. Where was I? Yeah, I was at home. I was in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really? That's yeah. Awesome. Like, so I, I, this is, let me set it up for you. So I generally get home late from church. Uh, so I normally will pause the game and like get into it about quarter after or whatever, and then like catch up through the commercials. Well, John Murphy, as you know, had a stroke and it was yeah. before that he had had the stroke before, right before the Bengals game. So literally I was like, well, I want to hear what Chris Brown sounds like on the radio call. So I was in the truck and I stayed in the driveway. I got home a little bit early, stayed in the driveway just to hear the opening kickoff because I wanted to hear him do a play-by-play at least one. And sure enough, that was the one he did. That's like, amazing. Kidding me right now. So then I went in the house and like started it up. But yeah, that was uh, that was an incredible play when you think about just the moment in time, what it meant, the, the fan. I wish I could have been at the game, but I was not at the game. But uh, absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um so EV says that his twin sister saw her first game this year. Uh, and then the Gabe Davis 99 yarder will always be a great memory. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't they start every game with two 99 yard touchdown passes? Right. Yeah. I think that the way to start every game is with a kick return for a touchdown and then you three and out for their offense and then a punt that. return for a touchdown. Oh, return for a touchdown. Right. <laughs> yeah. And right. And then uh after another three and out, then it's one play 99 yards. One one play. Yeah, play, yeah call it the 99 yard play. <laughs> that always works. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Gowry says uh week two, the number one seed in the AFC the previous season, especially waving the white flag before third quarter was even over. Did you want to say something to me? I was just saying that the 99 yard pass plays should be at the top of the play call list. On the gotcha, yes, the top of the play call, yeah. like when uh, they're doing this thing with the card, right? Call it, call do the 99 play. yard touchdown play <laughs> every time. Uh, but uh, Daniel says the, the number one seed in the AFC the previous uh, season, especially waving the white flag before the third quarter was even over. He's obviously talking about the Tennessee Titans 
uh, home opener game, uh, which was a lot of fun. This was a great moment. Pops Mafia says Matt Milano crushed mm. the Jets quarterback, uh, basically folding him in half. And uh, who was it? Was it Sterles that said turning him into a, a greater than sign? <laughs> or no, it was it was Joe. It was Joe Marino said that turning him into a greater than sign. I kind of like it more as a lesser than sign. A lesser than sign. Yeah. That, <laughs> that might have been what he said. Uh, I don't remember. How do you read that? Do you read it from like it's greater that, than? That, well, it, if I'm looking at you, lesser than that's greater than. So mouth okay. open is greater. All right, all right. You're, uh, too, yeah. you're too smart to not know that. I never use that symbol. True. I usually say greater than. <laughs> I the moment says the J, uh, Josh Allen Diggs touchdown play that left Jalen Ramsey stranded. So that would have been the the season opener. Um, uh, Lauren says to you, we've had a lot of beauty, John. I don't know when she was responding to that, but she did respond to you. Mm. Um, so da, 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 da. Dan put his comment in there twice. Uh, Amanda as well says the uh Naheem Hines 96 yard kick return will forever be in her head. What a moment! We all needed it. True, mm. <laughs> Pop Spot View says the stampede halftime show. <laughs> Literally, one of the things that McKenna every time she's with me, she's like, Why? <laughs> Why is this happening right now? Yeah, <laughs> I'm know. like, I don't know. They're good. Well, almost everything that happens at halftime of any sporting event, I don't pay any attention to. Like, you will find me at the grill during the Super Bowl halftime. I am yeah. not watching it. Right, for sure. For you sure. know, what's interesting is uh, overseas, you know, uh, they say Premier League, right? They play, they play a soccer match. They go in for halftime. Do you know what they do at halftime? Nothing. They don't know there's nothing going on on the field. People just go get more like giant beers oh. so they can, you know, start fights in the stands of football hooligans. Right, right, right. I'm actually going to skip John that one for John. So the first one John Hammer said is the highlight of his season was finding this podcast. And he followed it up with, I can't believe John Fina is in a podcast and a whole bunch of awesome people are on it. He's talking about me. I'm the awesome people. He's no, no. Not. I think he was talking about our lovely people in the comment section. Like Daniel or he was talking about the guests. Or he was talking about yeah, the guests. Right. Thurman Thomas, Daryl Talley. Yeah. That's Who true. That's them? true. Who yeah, else hey. have? Steve Tasker. And thanks for that. I appreciate that. Um, sure. And I'm sorry that our podcast is so hard to find. We need a publicist. <laughs> we do need a publicist. Tracy Frick Victor says, uh, Demar waking up was an absolute highlight fan, uh, with, without a doubt. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And amen to that one for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Maui Jim, Jim says that, uh, more away games are life goals. So apparently he, I wonder how many he went to. I know that, uh, so Sarah Larson went to all of them. We know that Kenny went to all of them, Ken Johnson, Kimmick. and then, uh, Kimmick went to all of them as well. Um, I know Spence went to a bunch and Dan, I think went to a bunch. But, uh, yeah, super, super good. Um, Richard Rush says the Tennessee and Green Bay game was awesome. Uh, he was there for the home opener. I I, wonder, I don't know if he showed up for both of those games, but I know that Rich showed up for the home opener because I remember seeing him. Well, I saw him before Green Bay, right? Oh, there. Yeah. You, then, then, yeah, then he was at both games. Yeah. Uh, I think he was at both games. But, yeah, so it sounds like yeah. that's what it was. Uh, Tracy says she needs to get to a home game. Uh, da, 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 da. Karen Idzik says, my favorite was driving 12 hours to Buffalo for the Browns game for it to be moved. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, in the snowstorm with my niece and then that, watching the game with friends and family. So that's the bait and switch <laughs> of all time. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Look over here. Woo. Zips. Yeah. Super hilarious. Uh, what are, you, are you trying to touch me? Oh, I got to go this way. Uh, Daniel Gowry says the outpouring of support for DeMar Hamlin was absolutely amazing. That whole thing is just something I'm always going to remember for sure. Well, um, we witnessed something historic, really. Uh, just the reaction nationally, globally, the outpouring, people donating $5 at a time. I mean, all right, Mimi, uh, you're unpaid, hired. just so you know. <laughs> a position and you are hired. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. As long as we're probably ready to get unpaid employee work. Yeah, submit your resume, <laughs> Mimi Viola Fina. Viola. Well, that's a pretty middle name. It sure is for a pretty girl, pretty so, woman. Were there any other great moments that you can think of off of the top of your head? For, another one for me was watching the development, the slow development of James Cook. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was interesting to see because we always hear these things like the game just looks too big for him, not him, James Cook, but just a player like, you know, when, at what point we hear that for the quarterback all the time. When did the game slow down for you? And we almost got to watch that this year with James Cook. The first four to five games, he was lost out there, mm. like very lost. And then by the Bears game, just watching him set his blocks up, be patient, not worried about it, dart through, make a decision and go. It was great. That was that to me was a fun part of the season. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 
you know, player wise, I mean, we could we could have a two hour show for things that impressed, disappointed, were interesting to watch. Not disappointed. We're not doing right. That. We're we're trying to be uplifting, positive. Uh, okay, well then, uh, I concur <laughs> with anything that I say. <laughs> with, with the James Cook comment, I do. I concur. I yeah. I I don't think that uh, it had to be so slow and methodical. I think he could have been in uh, quite a bit more. I know we obviously had to wait for, uh, <clears throat> you know, him to be RB two before it started for real. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's certainly if we had more. I'm trying to be positive, right? If we had a more dedicated, cohesive running package, it would have happened a little bit quicker. How's that? I tried to say it nicely. Yeah, that, that, um, that works. You know, I don't, uh, I, I like Josh Allen's leadership. You know, I'm impressed by the kid. Um, every time I turn around, I, I, I you and Tim agree. You and Tim agree. Yeah. There's, there's nothing, nothing that, uh, he lacks. Uh, it, it, and he's a really, really good face of this franchise. Um, I love seeing Von Miller until we lost him, man. Talk about a highlight of the year, Von watching Von Miller in a Buffalo Bills uniform. What yeah. A highlight. God, I mean, hopefully it happens again, right? I mean, it should. I mean, clearly, I don't think he's going to retire. He, he feels like, not that he's ready to play now, but he feels like he's going to be back for training camp, which to me seems aggressive. I think the um, the real resiliency, the, the beauty, the toughness of Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer um, and their, their absence or their injuries and how much, you know, we can appreciate guys like that. Uh, the Matt Milano fan club course mm -hmm. is is a great place to uh you know pay your dues because uh he's he's terrific and uh you know i had conversations with sean mcdermott and brandon bean mm -hmm. that had uh, to be yep. one on one and uh they didn't kick me to the curb you know to be fair i don't add any value to this franchise so they don't have to spend any time with me at all other than just goodwill and i i i'm thoroughly impressed uh we got the right guys they brought us to uh joe miller's wildest dreams land and um i'm thankful yeah i'm very thankful super big highlight for me was meeting a lot of the people that are in our comment sections the people that listen to and watch this show that maybe don't make themselves known publicly right so i know that when you've been in town a lot of people have been like oh i, you know, I watch your show every week yeah. uh meanwhile they don't comment so i've met i met a couple more people like that at the matt perino and ryan talbot thing on friday night uh just they're like i watch live every week and it's like i love it thank you anything Why? And obviously because like you see the number of people that are watching, you know, whether it's on YouTube or wherever else, and there's not that many comments flying. So, mm -hmm. uh, but just the opportunity to connect and, and get pictures with people. That's always fun. Uh, oh, oh, I have to say, uh, by the way, you copied me. I said that it was great meeting everybody yep, yet yep, again. Yep. Uh, you know, the people that send me this lovely gear, I mean, amazing people. I think that's uh, Maui Mike. So that's Mike or Maui Jim rather. That's Jim. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not just this gear, but some of the other gifts that I've received and I try to wear them when I'm on, you know, this hat from drew and yeah, yeah. the mug and everything. I mean, it, it uh, I, this is fun fact. I have own exhibit more Buffalo bills gear now than I ever did as a player. <laughs> if you came to my house when I was a Buffalo bill, you would see zero things that represented the buffalo bills that's amazing while yeah. when you were a player so you didn't have well you had to have workout gear sweats stuff like that right not really I'd, jacket. I'd, I'd leave that down at work at the stadium so what would yeah. you go what would you go home in with just a hoodie, so, a hoodie so i i treated uh my job with the buffalo bills as if i were you know any other career. So I, you know, I got up in the morning and, you know, I got ready. I took right. a shower. I dressed for work. I dressed, uh, you know, like you always laugh at me when I'm in a game and I'm wearing chinos and a collared shirt. And you're like, dude, what you're not, you're not an accountant. It's like, because on a text group, you called me the Soch going back to the outsiders. <laughs> Joe's the Soch. I'm like, I'm not the one there is khaki pants. Every so, you know, when I walked out of the building, other than some, hulking fat guy you wouldn't know that i was a buffalo bill <laughs> so i get i get there then i you know get into my gear when the time is right and then leave it all there and 
Hojo and Woody, the incredible support staff, would make it clean for the next day or yeah, following yeah. day. Yeah. So there was an incognito on this team, but apparently you were incognito before Richie incognito. Was Who on. was hilarious, by the way. I met him and Bruno got to meet him. And Oh, really? He was he was awesome. Like yeah. I think that really fired Bruno up. He was a great guy one on one. I know he's got, you know, the issues of old, but sure. <laughs> my experience one on one was was terrific. You know, he lives right up the road in Phoenix. I had to call the guy and see if he's <laughs> still awesome. You know, a, I'm sure a, he is. Get a beer with him. John Hammer wants to know soda you, pop. He wants to know if you ever went home in Zubas. I Zubaz. never wore Zubas. <laughs> we got to get John a pair of Zubas. <laughs> I don't even pronounce it right. So, dude, it was that was that was when you played. Those were the things. They were they were hammer pants, but Zubas Zubas. I, I, I don't back. wear Zubas. <laughs> I don't do shots. Uh, you know, there are a few things I don't do. You don't piss into the wind, probably right? Because I don't play to... leapfrog with a unicorn. <laughs> never tug on the old man's cape. <laughs> or superman's cape never talking superman's cape oops jim, yeah that'd be yeah, bad. Jim, jim croce song but uh but no there's just a lot of good stuff highlights from the year but uh um as we kind of transition through we we wanted to spend a couple minutes just talking about just some of the positive things from the season just because we've talked so not we bill's mafia has talked so much negative but uh before we transition transition to our next segment yeah yeah i'll, I'll say uh, another positive thing is uh having house capital and just John, uh, John Spazcheck, the market dominator, so, uh, supporting our show. It's mm, been uh, absolutely. It's been great. It's been humbling, and you know we try to deliver a product not just for you lovely people out there listening, but for our sponsors. You know, try to give a educated, decent opinion, uh, observations, and you may disagree, and I don't care. However, when you're looking to buy a house, everybody's got a guy. You might need work done on the roof. There was a guy on my roof today. Second oh, guy. I need right. I need work on my roof. So I got a guy for your roof. Uh, you need an inspection? Sure. Joe knows somebody. Probably. But when you're looking to get your financing together, you damn well better call Brian Belser from House Capital Corporation. <laughs> he can be your guy, the guy, everybody's guy. They help make the mortgage process simple, hassle-free, and understandable, which is a Herculean effort. At House Capital, their preferred relationships with some of the top lenders give you the edge up in getting the financing you need. Take it to the house with Brian Belser and House Capital. House, a registered mortgage broker, New York State Department of Financial Services, all loans guaranteed through third-party providers, equal housing opportunity, House Capital in the 500 Pearl Suite, NMLS number 1549644. If you are in the market to refinance, if somehow you have a worse interest rate than what's out there right now, <laughs> <laughs> give Brian a call at 716-815-2102. Or those, those mortgage rates are going to come down. You can call yeah. them right now. and uh, Most likely, if you're looking to buy a house, give G uh, John a call, John Spascheck, and then yeah. I'll bring with him Brian Belser. Give him a call if you're looking to buy a home, 716-815-2102. Or two one zero two. So, yep. but yes. So now transitioning to the next portion or part of our show, we're gonna spend a couple minutes just talking about maybe some ideas, right? Some changes. Somebody just asked. It was uh, Steve Lynn. Did Fina give Sean McDermott his insights on the O line yet? Um, I don't know if you've called down to the to the stadium or if you've called down mm -hmm. to the offices to let them know what you think. <laughs> yeah, I got a direct line. <laughs> it's a red phone. It's a red phone on Sean's desk. But we're going to talk yeah. about some things uh, that maybe the Bills need to do. I'm going to let you go first again. Uh, so pick a section, a, a position group, pick something. Ugh. Just bring up a topic that you think needs to be maybe tweaked just a little bit. You know, honestly, it, it's so hard uh, <laughs> because you have uh, what you like to call recency bias, right? So if you look yeah. at the last game, you just say, trash it all. You know, right, right. get 55 new guys, less one or two. And I get that. Everybody feels that way. But I'm trying to condense the entire season, right, uh, and look at it uh, unemotionally, if that's sure. possible. Sure. And I, I think if I started on the defensive side of the ball, I would just have to say it's hard to know um, who needs to join another franchise and who needs to stay in, in multiple positions because – I don't. I don't feel like our defense has really pushed the limits. Right. Right. You know they. It. it I. I. 
it was it was with a tear in my eye before the Cincinnati game when you know you and I sat here and agreed don't expect Leslie Frazier to do anything different, and lo and behold, you know we were prescient in that thought uh, because he didn't right we didn't do anything, Nothing. so I could sit here and I could I could I could bag on all three position groups, but I guess if I had to just kind of winnow it down, I would say that the production in the front four, regardless, has to get better. Yeah. Um, we used to have a saying when I played that, and you've heard it, everybody says it now, but it was, uh, uh, big time players make big time plays in big games, big big time games. That's right. And we didn't have that from the front four. We just didn't, uh, in situations where it needed to come from whole cloth, Mm -hmm. uh, to break a drive, to change momentum, any, say it any way you want. And the front four has quite a number of, you know, ones and twos along it. So I'm look, I'm not in charge of the salary cap. If I were, man, it would look like the, uh, the lotto we'd spend a billion every, every year. Um, but again, a a billion every year without the right planning doesn't really get you much. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't want to call people out by name but they're going to look at it as who are we invested with? Who do we see upside with and who might have disappointed to date based on their draft position and, and use the salary cap as a uh, barometer for who stays and who goes. Um, I've, I've said for the last three years, and then this year was, I walked it back when Von Miller was a part of this football team that I felt like it was a luxury that we just couldn't afford putting 50, $60 million. And I don't know what it's at now with Von Miller in a rotational defensive line, 48 to 50% of the snaps. And now year four Vaughn goes out. And I just don't think that it's, I think it's something on a whiteboard that looks great. And in practicality and reality, it just doesn't work. Um, and even, well, the, even so when you when you've got salary cap issues which this team has that's the number one problem which you're always going to have if you've got a Josh Allen at quarterback you're going to have some level i think uh 20% was the number i heard that the quarterback if you've got a quarterback like Allen Mahomes Burrow they're going to take up a non rookie contract about 20% of your cap I just don't think you can waste that waste is the word i'm going to use waste that much money rotating defensive linemen especially when you consider half the time half the defensive snaps your best players aren't on the football field why would you not give me vaughn miller daquan jones ed oliver jordan phillips take your pick and greg rousseau for 75 to 80 percent bruce smith never came off the field ever. uh that's not true but he, he played he, he, he no certainly not and look I, I will agree with you um there's another thought process to this which is it, we're in the interview process still. I mean, yeah. Von Miller produces beyond that. Who's who's produced on a regular rate of return. And the idea is, Hey, we didn't wear you out. Uh, we're, we're keeping you fresh so that you can do something fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So if that's the thinking, then we see a big shift in personnel in the yeah. front four. Yeah. And we may, uh, I agree with you in part. I think that, you pick four guys that take 70 to 75% of the snaps, yep. but dipping below that with the guys that you think are the best four probably isn't the right way to go. But I do believe in spelling them as an offensive oh, yeah. lineman. We never got spelled and right. I'm, I might've enjoyed it every now and again, but all well, right. So, what, so what, do you agree with me completely? By the way, I said 75, I think I said 80, but I was just throwing numbers out there like the bulk of the time. And I said this on my show last night, even if it means losing the game in Miami because of the heat, if you play a game in Miami and they're just completely exhausted and you lose that game, I would rather trade that game for the playoff game that you're, that you're going to lose by rotating them at 40, 48% and getting no pressure and no rhythm, no groove from these guys, right? Uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to talk to defensive linemen about that, the concept of being in a groove. I think it's a little bit different um, as an offense where you can really kind of grow together as a unit and be a groove. I mean, these guys are, these guys are battle hardened for one on ones and double team blocks. But what the guy does, you know, down the way and the coordination of it, it it's not 
uh, schemed, I think is, is maybe the word that I'm loosely using. So, yeah. uh, I, I do agree with you in part. I said, uh, I'm 75% with you, maybe 83. I could bump it up. All right, let's go to the other side of the ball. Um, everybody likes to bag on the offensive line and, and you can have it. You can do it all day long and twice on Sunday. That's fine with me. I think, I, I think we're think that far away. I don't think it's that far away. I think you move Ryan Bates back to left guard because, as you and Ruben said last year, flip-flopping sides is not just as simple as just flip-flopping sides. He was a much better graded left guard than he is a right guard. And then you draft a right guard in the first round late. Draft that guy. Yeah, look, I don't disagree with you. I think the biggest thing harming the offensive line for pass protection is the type of running attack that mm -hmm. we don't consistently utilize. Right. Um, and I think that's a problem. Uh, I, I still believe very much in our tackles, both of them, you know, the younger one needs some more development. He needs yeah, some, yeah. you know, I look at it like this. Like I was just on the phone today with Pat Hill, who was my mentor and look, I, I make no bones about it without Pat Hill. I'm not on this show. You don't know right. who John Cena is. Right. Um, and I talked to Pat about how, I'm, how to coach Bruno and review film and things of that nature. You know, somebody just like Josh Allen went and decided that I'm a good quarterback, but how do I get to be elite? And I, on my own, go seek uh, professional coaching. Right. You know, where does he need to get it? And he needs it. And I think he's very, very close. Um, so I'm good with the tackles. I think Mitch Morse is doing an, a great job at center. My concern about him is availability. I don't like his concussion uh, issues. I think Ryan Bates is doing a great job. Whether you want to move him to left and get a right guard, um, you could conceivably, I've heard talk of, well, just move Spencer down the right guard. I don't know what his experience is at guard. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't have moved me into guard. That wasn't my deal. I don't think Spencer Brown plays low enough to be a guard, frankly. Uh, you know, these are big, big men. Huge. And defensive tackles can be 6'3", and monsters of the game, and if they get up under your pads because you're a little high, I don't care if you weigh 320 or 520. Those guys will leverage you and move you. Right. So, sure. uh, I mean, by and large, Spencer Brown needs to get better uh, believing in his own strike. That's his issue. And, look, if you don't strike as a guard, you're D-U-N finished. Yeah. <laughs> so if, <laughs> if you're not going to get inside hand up and get a punch and placement – and take away the inside, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to play guard any play any any better than you play tackle. Yeah, I was talking. I was talking on the show last night, and I used one of your John Fina isms, just about the fact that, uh, and I think I think it may have been when we had Ostrowski on, and I, I think he agreed with you immediately when you said it. But when you talk about the type of offense that the Buffalo Bills run, and the whole like there is no three five step drop thing unless it's inside two minutes or inside the last two minutes of the game. So in those hurry up moments, they like to let Josh drop nine to 11 yards, dilly dally around back there. And you said, and this is where I referenced you, you know, when you talk about offensive linemen and pass protection, it's just a matter of time before I'm going to get beat, right? I've only got so much time before he's going to get around me because you're limited in what you can grab on how you can hold a guy and how you can maneuver. So you almost got to wonder as well, like, are they going to do something to help the offensive line, which was the part of the run scheme thing that you were just talking about? Like, can we run better? Can we run more? But are there passing plays like they do with Burrow? Like they put Burrow in a situation, he's got a bad offensive line, where he's helping the offensive line because the ball's coming out faster. Yeah, well, look, I mean, and I see people rolling in the comments saying that, uh, you know, everybody says our O-line is not great, but it is the scheme a little bit. A little bit. So if, if a defensive end puts on a good – uh, long way rush that's right? mm -hmm. around the outside, which is where I want him to go. A success rate for me is to get him at eight and a half. And just like Jerry said, Hey, if that's the plan to let not to correct Josh on the depth of his drops, I don't mind playing in that offense because <laughs> if, if I give up a hit or a sack, it, it's not on me. Not on you, when, right. when you go into the darkness of room 301 or wherever the meeting room is, and they bring that film up, your offensive line coach is gonna be like, He's going to be rolling the film back with a little clicker going, this ain't on you. Right. I mean, you you can't pass protect the entire goddamn field. Right. It just it ain't happening. Right. Um, but again, I mean, we are a pass first team. Our running game, 
it wasn't bad, but it, it, it wasn't cohesive. We didn't have a plan. You know, it, there was no identity to it. And that's what makes pass protection better and easier is a, is a, is a good running attack. I don't think that the Tennessee Titans offensive line is stunning, but their running back certainly is. Yeah, for sure. And that helps. I don't care. What's his name? The QB. I can never think of his name. Tannehill. Yeah, and t- everybody says, "Oh, Tannehill's an average QB," but he does some pretty cool stuff because he has, they have a strong running game. Yeah, I want to address Tim's comment. He says Morris may retire, which is always a possibility. Draft a center and play him at guard. If this happens, we're in a lot of trouble because now, now, now Ryan Bates is playing center, which Ryan Bates is a decent enough center, but now you've created two holes. So it isn't about drafting one guy, playing him at guard. You've now got two holes. Look, and if people are asking me, do you draft a tackle? Uh, you know, first and move Spencer in or draft a tackle and make him a guard or whatever. Sure. I mean, there's, there's enough things to talk about on this team. I don't think we have wide receiver too. No well, one's, no one stepped up. That's literally where I was going to go. So, before, so, so, you know, for you, John. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I'm drinking. I, I had tea already. I, you know, I drank a bunch of hot cocoa earlier or this is hot cocoa now. Oh, the cool. best, the best, the best way to look at it, um, and I was talking about it on the show last night, um, because when you look at it right now, it, it seems like a big mess. Because we came into this season and all the expectation and all the excitement around Gabriel Davis uh, jumping into that number two role, and then it, none of it came to fruition, right? So it, literally none of it. So then you're like, oh my gosh, we've got Stefan Diggs, we have Gabriel Davis, we don't really have a slot guy. Crowder is on a one year deal. Beasley's not currently signed. You know, you've got Shakir in there, and then that's pretty much kind of where you're left. And McKenzie, who who knows where that's at. And then it's like, who's four and five? Is it Kumaro still? Kumaro's a free agent. I don't know that we're going to keep that guy. But when you look at that situation, and literally all it takes is, and this was the point I was making, Cole Beasley standing in your doormat, pounding on the door saying, please let me in. The dude yeah. wants to come back. Mm-hmm. He's like, if they'll have me, I'm back. Immediately slotting him for one year. In that in 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 the slotting him in the slot, right? Putting him in the slot, and then effectively finding a number two, whether it's in the draft or somebody in free agency, or even making a trade and moving Gabe back to number four pushes Khalil Shakir to five, and all of a sudden that wide receiver room looks really good again, right? Yeah, I don't know that pushes Khalil Shakir to five. Frankly, I think you you might not. Have, I like that kid. And what was he fifth or seventh round? I can't remember. Uh, sixth, fifth or sixth, fifth or sixth, fifth, I think. Yeah, and that's the nice thing, honestly, about college football right now is the number of receivers that are available is a lot. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get Justin Jefferson in the second round or third round, Um, but there are guys who can do the job. And look, I'm not saying Gabe Davis isn't skilled enough, right? But I don't know where the production fell short, but I have to think it's it's past the breastplate. And I'm not saying the guy doesn't have heart, but he's there's something missing because the skill is there, right? Right. I right. mean, he's he's a great guy, and is you know as far as the skill set goes, it's there. I just we need to see it. We need to see it. Come on. Yeah, we definitely need to see it. It's I just I'm not sure that he can work off of double coverage. I'm not sure that he can work if he's being bracketed. I'm not sure mm-hmm. that he can work if he's got the number two best corner or the one. We heard many ca- occasions where they were taking the number two corner and a safety bracketing digs and putting the number one on on Davis. And I just don't know that he is ready for that. Right. All right. All right. Well. Um... Let's talk about uh, bracketing yourself between uh, the grill and uh, and a beer. How's that? I like it. Listen, uh, I gave a shout out earlier about House Capital and John Spaschek supporting our show. And I didn't omit Iman Azizi and Q42 because I wanted to just do a special shout out to the guy who first recognized greatness in Joe Miller and decided to ride on uh ride on his coattails and drag me along with him so iman thank you for your continued support uh i love your products man and just just for everybody out there just like we are talking about gabe davis the bills need to step up their game in certain areas but you might need to step up your barbecue game and if you're serious about it step up your barbecue game with Q42. Mm. Now that we're headed into the off season, take some time, do a little study in, get your barbecue products and let's explore the fresh flavors coming from Q42. It's authentic. It's original. 
It's award-winning. It's natural with no fillers, just like Bill's Mafia. All real barbecue sauces and rubs from South Buffalo, Q42. Go to Q42BBQ.com. That's Q-U-E-4-2. BBQ.com and Hulk smash in <laughs> FINA show all caps as your coupon code and save 33% wow. on your order. Holy cow. It says Iman, 50% in the, in the graphic. Well, I don't know about the graphic. I get Better a read. Than double. Better he, tru- than double. He, tru- he emails me the read because he trusts me, Joe. He trusts wow. me. That's fair. I think that's fair. So 33% from Iman. Thank you, sir. Uh, we hope to have you back next year. Yes. Um, I know that uh, even if you choose not to, I will still order your rubs and sauces. Same, same. So with the last 10 minutes of the show, we're going to talk about effectively just expectations for next season. Wait, uh, wait, wait. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't finished on my uh, assessment. So, oh, oh, uh, well, I think Dawson Knox has to become a little bit better blocker when he's asked to to block in the running game. Well, so does Khalil Shakir. <laughs> yeah, so does yeah. Well, we did wide receiver group, um, but I like Dawson. And honestly, uh, when he was drafted, a lot of people were griping, and I was talking to my buddy from uh, Kenmore, and we both said, "Yeah, you know what? We like this pick." Well, I want to love the pick. Let mm-hmm. Let's get some blocking going for you, Dawson, and. Uh, Again, with Dorsey. So I talked about Frazier with Dorsey. I mean, you know, we see these different packages come in. Sometimes we have a fullback. Sometimes we don't. We see these, what I consider really bad um, running formations where we're bringing too many guys in to block when they shouldn't. Clean it up, Dorsey. Figure it out. Figure out a way to expose the middle of the field. Mm. Take a look at some Kansas City film and see Mm. that every time uh, Patrick Mahomes is is uh, scrambling. There's always somebody standing next to the sideline who's ready to receive a six or five or eight yard pass. Figure right. this out. Decide: Are we going to screen and get it right, or don't screen at all? <laughs> are we going to swing and throw the quick pass and block it and get six on first down? Then figure it out and get it right. Know the defensive personnel groupings. Get better. Um, I, I can't lay all this on the players. I think, I think, and people talk about talent all the time. I think the talent is there. I really believe in the talent. Agreed. But I, I think that that can't, that Cincinnati game was so flat, uh, but it was not unlike some of the game planning in previous games that we discussed. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. something has to break and get fixed. Yeah, one of my other highlights of the year was uh, having Steve Tasker on the show, um, and he and he and you and I you and I had already talked about it, and he finished my comment when getting to the wide receiver screen. I said, when you see how many wide receiver wide receiver screens are run against this team successfully, don't you think? And he literally said the offense could run one, <laughs> and I was like, yes, that. <laughs> It was amazing. So I, the moment asks who's RB one next year Uh, to me, they're going to draft a running back probably somewhere in the sixth, seventh round would be my guess. Some someplace late. It'll be James cook. They'll probably ask James cook to put 10 pounds on. So James cook, it was, it was, I think Pamela was talking about it. Uh, James cook is one inch taller than his brother, Dalvin, and he weighs 10 pounds less, which is why he looks thin. So they'll probably ask him to put on 10 pounds of muscle, which you might be able to speak to that. When the bill when the bills drafted me and I got to training camp, I was 286 pounds. And by the time I became a starter, I played at about 300. And uh, the following year, I, I typically played for seven of my nine starting years in Buffalo at 310, 308 pounds. Wow. So it's a maturity thing, guys. You know, some guys take longer to develop and gain weight, but I would agree. They're going to put some mass on him. But isn't it almost impossible from the time you graduate college with all the stuff that's going on through your first rookie year to even, like, put on weight? I hear people talk, especially if you're playing a lot, that it's like almost like you need that first off season to kind of settle in, begin to understand how to eat, what to eat, how to work out, when to work out, that kind of crap. Yeah, I got to think that he got a lot of that at the school he came from. I mean, the kid played at Georgia, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, that that's not like uh, Mancota State or anything like that, or Mankato. Or Wyoming. <laughs> right. So, look, uh, you know, it just could be a metabolism maturity thing. Um, it, he'll gain the weight. 
it yeah. could he be RB one? Yeah, I mean, I like Singletary. I don't think that he has uh, some he's, of the excitement. He's and, gone. They're not going to resign. And, and I and I and I think you don't resign him. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny because NP eighty six says uh, three hundred pounds can't be healthy. You weren't fat three hundred pounds. You were pretty svelte three hundred pounds from the pictures I've seen. Right. You know, honestly, I don't care. I mean, you could call me fat. My feelings aren't going to get hurt. I mean, I'm just so over the cover. Oh, but you were a muscular 310. And I'm well, like, yeah. And, and and I had 40 pounds of grease hanging off my belly. So. There's, there's, there's Pat Washington, right? Sam Adams, 340 pounds. And then there yeah. was John Fina, 320 pounds or 310. Is just, I, I, think think you mean, guys, I think you mean Ted Washington. Ted Washington. Uh, yeah. No, Pat Washington was on this team as well uh yeah, he, then he went to minnesota it was pat and ted in the middle and then they yeah, let pat it, go to washington go to minnesota yeah it's not washington it's pat oh my god i can blank it on his name he's hilarious anyway uh pat sure. williams Is it pat William? anyway yeah look i don't care i was fat i was thin i was muscular whatever i mean those days are gone i'm like 245 now i'm a pencil <laughs> neck i'm a shadow of my former self but i feel right, a lot right. better and 310, 300 pounds is, you know, it's as healthy as you're going to get when you're lifting weights. I mean, I wasn't just like I wasn't doing anything. So was I Pat, don't know. by the way, Pat Williams, you were correct. Thank you. Winner. You're friends with them. So it kind of, you have an unfair yeah. advantage. But I was uh, like, who's Pat Washington? That's funny. But uh, so just uh, let's wrap up the show real quick, just talking about just maybe some expectations, right? I know you said you had some more position groups you wanted to go through, but we're getting, unless you want to go a little bit long tonight. And no, no, that's good. I mean, special teams, uh, you know, I'm going to address it the same way I always have. Just don't hurt me. So I'd like to see, cons- I'd like to just see no turnovers and no penalties. That's all I care about. If you fair catch every damn punt, or you never return a kick and we start at the 25, I'm fine. Just don't hold. Don't block in the back. Don't get a punt block. Don't fumble right. the ball. Right. I just don't hurt me. Don't right. don't have me running out onto the field like, woohoo, we're starting at the 38. And out of the corner of my eye, I see that yellow flag back there, and then we're at the 11. <laughs> I'm like, no. No, that, that's like – I, I literally like I'm jogging like I weigh like a hundred pounds and then I'm like dejected and I weigh five hundred. So I can show, barely get to the damn huddle. Show us where they hurt you, John. Show us where they hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> they hurt me with like 89 yard drives. That's hysterical. But uh just so expectations, kind of like you know, one one of the things considering expectations, and I know that Brandon Bean made a big stink about it, and he should, rightfully so. He said he expected the salary cap to be between 225 and 230. It ended up at like 228. The bills are currently at 240. Here's some moves that they can make. Now, he did say that they're not going to make any big splash signings this year. He said that last year. The bill signed Von Miller. My guess is they're not going to do that this year, especially needing Tremaine Edmonds to be resigned if they go that route. Josh Allen, they can his current cap it is 27.5 million. They can actually by moving some of his money around, they can actually have a cap savings of 21 million dollars which immediately puts them under the cap. Vaughn Miller, same thing. Current cap is 13.6. They can actually, by moving some money around, get him down. His, his cap savings can be 10.9. This isn't changing their salaries. It's just the way that it's yeah, I know. Yeah. the cap. Cash yeah. to cap type crap, whatever. Deion Dawkins, 8.5. They can actually save 6.3. Trey White, they can actually save 6.1, which means they can actually practically have $45 million in cap space, which would give them the opportunity to resign Jermaine Edmonds do some other things and kind of do what they need to do. I don't think that they'll do all of those things because every one of those guys that they do that, they push it, they kick the can down the road and cause problems later. So you might see them do that with one or two guys, probably not all of those guys. Yeah. Well, that, that just brings up the question though. I mean, this was the year, I think the secondary issues hurt us and it wasn't our year, but is next year the year? I mean, what are you banking on? Look, if the Buffalo Bills go to the playoffs every year for the next 20 years and don't win a Super Bowl, I'm going to be happy. I'd be ecstatic if they won one. But right. then the question out there today, I think from Jay Spence, the King was, you know, would you rather win one and then not make the playoffs for the next five years? So what do you want? Right. Um, right. Look, if they don't make any changes in coaching personnel, which is the first thing you have to do, if you're going to do it, am I right? Cause this, yeah. This is the time. Guys are getting fired and hired. This is the time. So if they don't make any changes now, then I don't expect any other really flashy changes to right. come about. You're probably um, right. 
And and I don't know where everybody sits on that. I, I look, I like Leslie Frazier. I don't know that that's the defense that's going to win it for us with the talent in the AFC at the QB and wide receiver position. I I just don't love death by a thousand cuts. Right. You know, game plan, bring some heat, get the right guys to bring pressure. And so again, going back to what I said, if Dorsey and Leslie Frazier stick around, I don't expect to see anything flashy. Uh, they'll be saying we're going to help ourselves in the draft and maybe a couple of releases and free agent signings um, that are a little, little more than, or mostly role players along with the big names that we have to sign. Yeah, by the way, I got that information from Greg Thompson from Cover One, who is a uh, uh, cap guru and kind of like mm-hmm. a salary cap guru. So that's where the information came from. And then to your point, uh, we lived it. So we lived almost kind of like on two different teams. So when the Buffalo Bills were going to Super Bowls and losing them, the Kansas City Chiefs sniffed the playoffs every freaking year and mm-hmm. could never get out of the playoffs a lot of times to the hands of the buffalo bills so that's one of them another one would be the dolphins while my, dan marino went to one super bowl his rookie season i think it was his rookie season right or second 84 second season probably i mean they did they could never get past elway or kelly like they could they just couldn't do it as far as yeah that so hey uh, and you know additionally as part of a wrap-up like i get it you know people are emotionally in, invested in this team like i am and you are and, you know, you want to get angry and call for change and, and that's fine. Uh, as long as like, what I don't like is when it get, becomes disrespectful or unsavory, mm-hmm. you know, these, these mm-hmm. are men who's, you know, have families and everything like that. And you can be pissed and I'm okay with that. And you, mm-hmm. you, like I said, you know, fire them all or keep them all or whatever you want to do. Um, I just love that I'm rooting for the Buffalo bills and they have a chance, you yeah. know, I, I never yeah. felt that way for a long time. And, and, uh, you know, it's not an embarrassment of riches just yet, but it does feel good to know that I can wear a Buffalo Bills hat around town and people say, oh, I like your bills, man, you know, and yep, yep. And, and that feels really good. It does. And uh, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, um, especially after meeting and talking to Bean and McDermott. So the somebody put up, and this is where I was going with that. Sorry, it took me so long to get there. Somebody put up a... a a, a, a kind of a summary of some of your more famous quarterbacks and head coaches mm-hmm. and how long it took them to get there. Right. And in the back of your mind, we all know it. Everybody in the comment section knows how long it took Andy Reed yep. and, and Peyton Manning. But when it was all lined up right there in one little tweet, I was like, Holy cow, we got it good. Yeah. We, and I still got hope and I'm still, I'm still ready and raring to go. Yeah. The hard, the hard part is, you know, being that Peyton Manning to Tom Brady, where you win one and Tom Brady wins six or seven, being that Dan Marino to Jim Kelly, where Dan goes to one before Jim's even in the league. And then Jim goes to four in a row. Like mm-hmm. you just don't want to be that. You don't want to be that team. You don't want to be that guy. If you've got Josh Allen, you don't want to waste his talent. You don't want to waste his time. You don't want to waste his career, not game planning on defense. And no, just- and, and I think we don't even have this conversation if that Cincinnati game was close, mm-hmm, win mm-hmm. or lose. Mm-hmm. But that was a miserable game to Maybe watch. Maybe this is the shock they need, right? Yeah. I Maybe don't know. this is them getting broken up with by their hot fiance who's, mm-hmm. who says, you know, and now they're taking an internal look and they're like, I got to be better. Are you giving the, Joe? Are you going to give the ring back? <laughs> the ring has to come back. That's protocol. That's standard operating procedure. You don't get the <laughs> ring. You don't uh, get the ring. So, but uh, awesome. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, you have been tuned into all season long the Off Tackle with John Fetish Show, brought to you by the Market Dominator team on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network. Uh, special thanks to the Market Dominator. Special thanks to House Capital. Special thanks to Q42. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, Super great just to having everybody on this ride with us this year. Excited already for next year. Any final thoughts, comments? Whew. Um, keep the faith. Keep your chin up. You know, watch hockey if that helps. It doesn't help me. It does help. Um, be a good, be a good citizen. Be a good person. You know, keep that, uh, keep that hope for humanity and your neighbor and your city alive, just like you did when when it was Demar Hamlin. Mm-hmm. And let's gear up. Let's load up. Let's pay attention. Let's be respectful and 
for the love of God, go Bills. Yeah, for sure. Thank you to everybody. Tomorrow, uh, Code of Conduct with Jay Spence the King. Wednesday, uh, potentially Hump Day Hotline. I know Jay Spence the King is potentially traveling. I'm not sure. And I might actually not be available either. So we'll kind of see how that thing shakes out. Thursday, Three Man Rush. And I believe Food for Thought is done for good. So there will not be a Friday show this year. But for me, for John, for Buffalo Rumblings, for the Market Dominator, for House Capital, for Q42, goodness gracious, for Mimi Fina, who's in the comment section, the lovely Mimi Fina, and everybody else. Go Bills! Go Bills!